Uh, let's put the spotlight on the one thing that has been sparkling bright this year and especially in the last couple of weeks. And of course, I am talking about the yellow metal, which is gold. We're looking at spot prices trading above $2,600 uh, at this point in time. So what is the trajectory going forward and what do these rate cuts from the Federal Reserve if they start kicking in this week as planned and what do they mean for pre the precious metal space? Well, we have with us an expert to answer that. Peter Maguire of XM Australia is joining in. Peter, great to have you on the show this morning. Thanks for being with us. That's really the question. Uh, so gold moving, uh, gold moving higher as we're expecting these rate cuts to kick in. What are the market dynamics that you, that you see immediately ahead? Sure, boy. I mean, you know, you can't deny what's happened over the last, you know, 11 to 12 months. We were at a low of 1800 or early October, and here we are mid-September through 26. So the momentum has just been extraordinary, and I feel as though that that is going to increase possibly in the run-up to, you know, New Year, quite simply because rate counts, <coughs> what's happening geopolitically, <coughs> and naturally the overall momentum of central bank buying has been very strong, and I feel as though the US dollar will come under more pressure to the downside, so it's going to be, I think, one-way traffic for the yellow metal as it roars into 25, well, to 2025. So, so that's, uh, you know, I guess that's a little bit of the trading momentum that kicks in as money gets cheaper when the rate cuts come in. Uh, what about actual, uh, you know, demand and supply in the market and the way it's playing out, demand from India as we get into the festive season? Uh, does that look supportive? Well, I think so. I feel as though that that will only increase. And I think the appetite globally across retail investors has been very strong, not only for the paper market, of course, but for physical. So there's the first side. I feel as though that India will continue its upward lift. And, you know, your central bank has been very, very strong as far as buying, along with Turkey and the likes of Russia and many of the, you know, major nations and China are buying at record levels. So I feel as though that that will continue. And uh, as we, as we, I think, ingest or digest the, uh, the, the situation, it's pretty hard not to be long gold and long physical gold. So that seems to be the, the trade. And, it hasn't denied anyone this year because it's just been extraordinary over the last 11 and a half months. Hi, Peter. Good morning. Good to see you, Ben. So gold, you're sounding fairly optimistic. What about silver? You know, we know that that one could buck the trend and suddenly sometimes outpace what gold does. What's the view at, uh, you know, on silver at around this $30, $31 odd? Uh, well, Nigel, good to see you. And I think a couple of things. First off, the gold to silver ratio, I think, is very, very lean at the moment. I feel as though that, that will compress... So if it does compress and you come back, you're now running at about 83 to 1. That's 83 ounces of silver equals one ounce of gold approximate. I feel as though that'll narrow and it'll really start to compress over the next matter of months. And there's been underinvestment in the silver market for the best part of a decade or two. So that seems to be a real big push. And once it, once it starts to gain momentum, I think it's going to be onward and upward. I wouldn't be surprised to take 35 bucks out or higher by end of year Let's just see where it all rolls because we've got a lot of big themes about to be played out across the economic landscape, unwinding as far as policy from many central banks and, of course, what's happening with US elections and the overall momentum. OK, uh, absolutely. Just to get the, the levels and the targets again, Peter. So uh, gold, what, what's the next stop that uh, you, you forecast? Well, sir, it's pretty hard. I mean, it's just been bouncing so heavily and so so dramatic. So everyone was 26 to 2700, spanked through 26. So 27, 2750. I wouldn't be surprised if it hit 27 by end of month. That's just as momentum. I'm talking in the futures market. Then the next part, I think silver, you know, it's got to be a 32 to $34 play. And if it really goes through that with momentum, then, you know, $35, $36 it's capable of. Many analysts are out there saying 3000 or 3000 plus. And, uh, you know, I remember having these conversations this time last year and people saying 2500 it won't happen. Well, here we are. And uh, you've got three and a half months to run to the end of the year. And it just seems to be, you know, very yeah, giddy up. It's, it's, it's galloping away. Mm. Peter, just one question on this because uh, there's so much debate about what the cut will be, right? As you said, 25 or 50. Uh, mm -hmm. e even earlier last week, uh, the general thinking was if it's going to be 50, uh, perhaps it'll cause a little bit of worry because markets may assume that the Fed knows more than the market. Uh, so maybe Absolutely. 25 is preferable. I'm not so sure anymore, and I don't know if you agree, because there were two articles in the Wall Street Journal and the FT, 
And if they indeed were, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if they indeed were not plants, but basically leaks uh, to yeah. condition the market to towards a 50. Now, actually, if you don't get a 50, is that going to be a, a, a negative? What's what's your sense? Couple of things, Prashant. First off, I I feel, and it's really just started to squeeze and compress in the last couple of days. You're running at around about a 15 or 17 percent chance on Thursday. Then it really changed the whole footprint on Friday, and the it's now at around about 52 on the CME. It's 52 percent probability of a 25 basis point, 48 percent for 50 basis points. I'm erring the other side on on 50. I'll tell you why. They'll front load this because they need to get around about 115 basis points of cuts. And that's why I think that they'll hit it hard. They probably, as you said, there's probably structural weakness in the US economy from the labor market perspective, and they're keeping a very close eye on it. So this is a real concern. So let's just see how this rolls out. But I feel 50 and they'll probably hit 115 basis points. And that's what they're calling by December 31. So there's a lot of movement um, for uh, for yields and certainly for Fed policy over the next couple of months to be yeah, hit us between the eyes. And then therefore, those calls of 3,000 and gold, perhaps that's how they kind of you know, add up and maybe even make some sense if you're looking at these really massive rate cuts coming in. Markets get a little spooked perhaps about you know, the extent of the underlying uh, economic sluggishness. Thank you very much, Peter. Great conversation Thank with you. You, so you have much. a good rest of the day and a good week as well.